Chapter 1 Introduction Why I Wrote This Book My patients, students, and colleagues remain the inspiration behind this book. After observing significantly positive changes in my patients, I felt motivated to gather my thoughts on spirituality. My colleagues reported that the principles shared during group therapy and educational seminars provided a roadmap to our innate capacity for happiness, success, health, love, inner peace, and creativity. These principles are useful for all dimensions of well-being, physical, emotional, social, and spiritual. They help people struggling with daily stress, depression, anxiety, addiction, eating and personality disorders, trauma, anger, and sleep issues. Initially, I was reluctant to write a book about spirituality, as it is seen by many as a controversial topic. Nonetheless, when looking at studies and evidence, it has demonstrated an encouraging impact on mental and physical health. The World Health Organization, WHO, has highlighted the importance of a spiritual dimension in health. When viewing individuals using a whole-person approach, biological, psychological, social, and spiritual aspects, and are equally important to our well-being, and it is by addressing these levels simultaneously that we can more successfully maintain optimal health and recover from illness. Although there are genetic factors that affect our overall health, epigenetic signals from habits and environment could have a considerably greater influence. Therefore, we must choose wisely and understand that it also takes intention and dedication to maintain our overall health. As individuals, we need real whole foods, movement, relaxation, plenty of rest, fresh air, sunshine, a positive mindset, and community. We also have spiritual needs, such as the need for hope, meaning, purpose, the need to feel connected with ourselves, nature, and others. Ultimately, we have the need to be loved. These spiritual basics become more prominent during times of sickness and suffering, as several studies have shown. Before I delve further into spirituality, I would like to first mention the most important areas needing attention when addressing physical, psychological, and social needs. Greater strength can be developed through their advancement, with each element acting to reinforce the other. Physical Needs Regular exercise, sleep hygiene, healthy diet, medication if needed. Regular exercise, physical activity. Why exercise or engage in physical activity? Exercise benefits go far beyond the physical, better sleep less physical pain, or physical illness. It also offers psychological and emotional benefits. Regular exercise can aid in releasing feel-good endorphins, as well as natural brain chemicals, like those found in cannabis, which can enhance our sense of well-being. Physical activity has been shown to benefit a variety of mental health conditions and issues, including depression, anxiety, eating and bipolar disorders, schizophrenia, addictions, grief, relationship problems, dementia, and personality disorders. In addition, physical movement is associated with enhanced mood and energy, reduced stress, deeper relaxation, improved mental clarity, learning, insight, memory, and cognitive function, enhanced intuition, creativity, assertiveness, and an enthusiasm for life. Exercise and physical activity are among the most important things we can undertake for mental, physical, and general emotional well-being. How much is enough? Studies have shown that daily exercise of 30 minutes or more can significantly improve emotional disturbances, with as little as 10 to 50 minutes of movement making a positive impact. Some of my patients' favorite activities include walking, yoga, dancing, gardening, tai chi, lifting weights, and organized sports. 
How to Stay Motivated Choose an activity you enjoy doing and invite a partner, coworker, or friend to join you. Begin to incorporate these activities as part of your lifestyle with a focus on personal improvement rather than viewing it as something I need to do. Think about what might be stopping you from exercise or being physically active and you will likely find a solution. Whatever the reason, lack of energy, not having the money to spend on sports, being too busy with young children or your job, there is always a way to overcome it. For example, if you have a restricted budget, do something cost-free, like walking in nature, or involve your children and spouse to make a part of your family's quality time together. It will also help to set reasonable goals. Think realistically about what you are able to do and begin gradually. Sleep Hygiene The amount and quality of sleep you get has an astonishing impact on health maintenance and mental wellness. Sleep is the time when the body repairs itself. Hormones are produced during the night, for example, melatonin, which are necessary for the immune system and recovery from daily stresses. Poor sleep weakens your body defenses, as well as the process of repair. Our internal biological clock, or circadian rhythm, serves to coordinate internal time with the external world. Studies show that if the circadian rhythm is not properly synchronized with the 24-hour solar day, it can lead not only to an increased risk of physical disease, but psychiatric illnesses, including depression. If you have difficulty sleeping or wish to improve your sleep, try the following tips. Follow a sleep schedule. Everyone has personal sleep needs. On average, adults need 7 to 8 hours of sleep per night. Going to bed and getting up at the same time each day helps with this, as limiting variations in your sleep schedule to no more than one hour will ensure that you maintain a healthy circadian rhythm. If you don't fall asleep within approximately 20 minutes, leave your bedroom and do something relaxing, like reading or listening to soothing music. Go back to bed when you're tired and repeat if necessary. Create a restful room. Keep your bedroom cool, dark, and quiet. Consider using darkening shades or sleep mask. Minimize blue light from electronics directly before bedtime. Artificial light from light bulbs, TV screens, computers, and smartphone screens interfere with melatonin production and prevent you from sleeping. Set aside at least 30 minutes before bedtime to unplug and prepare for sleep. Calming activities such as a warm Epsom salt bath, soothing music, reading, drinking valerian or chamomile tea, and deep breathing exercises or other relaxation techniques may promote better sleep. Avoid stimulants. The stimulating effects of nicotine and caffeine take hours to wear off and can disturb your quality of sleep. While alcohol may make you feel sleepy, it can disrupt sleep later in the night. Additionally, in terms of optimal sleep, it's better not to go to bed too hungry or too full. Avoid daytime naps. If you choose to nap, limit the time to 20 or 30 minutes and avoid doing so late in the day. Otherwise, it could interfere with your nighttime sleep. Exercise during the day. Regular physical activity can improve sleep but try to avoid too much exercise too close to bedtime. Manage your worries. Meditation, journaling, and breathing exercises can help with managing stress and controlling anxiety. Healthy and balanced diet. Many chronic illnesses, including mental and behavioral problems, are exacerbated by modern diets. Evidence continues to mount linking chronic diseases with modern foods, Yet these conditions can be helped and even prevented by eating a diet of nutrient-dense whole foods. For example, the foods our ancestors ate, such as fresh, non-processed, and farm-to-table foods. Here are easy-to-follow tips. Eat whole foods in the form that Mother Nature made them. Choose real food over processed food. 
Consider adding fermented foods to your diet. For example, kimchi, lacto-fermented pickles, sauerkraut, kefir, yogurt, kombucha, etc. Whenever possible, choose foods that are grown locally. Eat foods in their proper season. Choose pesticide or chemical-free, GMO-free foods. Studies have shown that certain types of foods can cause chronic inflammation. Long-term inflammation occurs without symptoms inside your body. This type of inflammation can trigger illnesses like diabetes, heart disease, fatty liver, cancer, and mental illnesses such as depression and anxiety. We know from research that some foods cause inflammatory and other negative effects on mental health, while some produce anti-inflammatory effects and have a positive impact on mental health. Consider minimizing these inflammatory foods. Refined carbohydrates and flour, white bread, white pasta, pastries, chips, pretzels, crackers, cookies, etc. Processed sugar, cane sugar and corn syrup, candy, soft drinks, sugar-sweetened drinks and fruit juices, cakes, cookies, donuts, and certain cereals, etc. Processed vegetable or seed oils and trans fats, partially hydrogenated oil, margarines, butter replacement, vegetable and seed oils such as corn, canola, peanut, sunflower, grapeseed, other processed foods, highly processed red meat, for example, hot dogs, fast foods or fried foods, or anything in packaging that may contain inflammatory foods, such as white flour, sugar, and hydrogenated or vegetable oil. Alcohol. It is best to abstain from alcohol, especially if you have mental health problems. Consider adding more of these anti-inflammatory healthy foods. Fatty fish, salmon, sardines, mackerel, etc. Whole grains, oatmeal, brown rice, whole wheat bread, nuts and seeds, almonds, walnuts, pumpkin seeds, etc. Vegetables, garlic, onions, mushrooms, cauliflower, bell or chili peppers, green leafy vegetables such as spinach, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, kale, etc. Fruit, tomatoes, pomegranates, deeply colored berries, grapes, cherries, blueberries, etc. High-fat fruits, avocados and olives, chocolate, dark chocolate and cacao, healthy oils, olive oil and coconut oil, spices, turmeric, ginger, cinnamon, etc. Tea, green tea, psychological. For emotional well-being, we need to focus on identifying and processing our emotions through journaling, daily affirmation, and talking to others who will not judge us. These could be a close friend or family member, or someone found in counseling through individual and group sessions. We should also practice behavioral techniques aimed to promote a relaxation response. Meditation, mindfulness, breathing exercises, guided imagery, progressive muscle relaxation, etc. Learning CBT skills, cognitive behavioral therapy, and DBT skills, dialectical behavior therapy, have shown tremendous impact on mental health. As CBT and DBT are powerful tools that promote new patterns of thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, and are rooted in evidence-based practices for treating different mental illnesses. Social. No man is an island. John Don. Community is one of the most critical elements of wellness and healing. No one can go through profound transformation alone. We need each other to thrive and recover. Mutual support through the 12-step groups such as Alcoholics Anonymous, AA, or any other support group are an immensely powerful healing space where we can find inspiration in our recovery journey.
by communicating with others. You can also find community within holistic and spiritual groups, local yoga groups, permaculture, school, work, through volunteering, and so on. In so many ways, our health is linked to our experience of connection with others. Research tells us that social isolation leads to physiological and psychological struggles. Spiritual When I asked my patients why they think spirituality is important, or rather, what they get from spirituality, these were their responses. Feel supported and not alone. Feel peace, love, and joy. Discovery of my true self. Find meaning in life and personal values. Feel a sense of purpose. Release of control to a higher power. Expand my support network while getting to know others who have similar interests. When I asked my patients how they established spiritual connectedness, they provided me with the following examples. A sense of connectedness to self, others, nature, or a higher power. Spending time in nature. Meditation, contemplation, prayer. Ceremonies, creativity, group gatherings, helping others. Twelve steps of AA. Religion, painting, dancing, singing playing instruments, writing poetry. Difference between religion and spirituality. Dr. Harold Kennig, psychiatrist in the Faculty of Medicine at Duke University, has undertaken the first systematic evidence-based analysis of the connection between mental disorders and religion and illustrates the difference between religion and spirituality. Religion. Religion involves beliefs and practices related to the transcendent, wherein the transcendent is God, Allah, or a higher power in Western religious traditions, or to Brahman, Buddha, or ultimate truth in Eastern traditions. Religions have specific beliefs about life after death and rules about conduct within a social group. Established religious traditions can be practiced in private or public settings. Spirituality Spirituality is a connection to that which is sacred, or the transcendent, which can be outside of and within the self. Spirituality can be achieved through religion, or can extend beyond organized religion. It includes a search for both the transcendent and the discovery of the transcendent, through which you discover your true self, find meaning in life, and feel a sense of purpose. Carl Jung's Views on Spirituality and Mental Health Most mainstream psychotherapies have largely ignored the spiritual dimension of our being, with the exception of the holistic or whole-person approach, such as Jungian analysis and transpersonal psychology. The purpose of most psychotherapy is to adjust the ego, for which there is often no conception of what lies beyond it. In contrast, a transpersonal approach proposes that there are developmental stages beyond the adult ego, which involve experiences of connectedness with the self, others, nature, or a higher power. Carl Jung, the Swiss psychiatrist and founder of analytical psychology, was recognized as a leader in the field of transpersonal psychology by calling attention to the importance of spiritual experience. He suggested that psychological development extends to include higher states of consciousness and can continue throughout life rather than stop with the attainment of adult ego maturation. Unlike Sigmund Freud and his followers, who described religion as an obsessional neurosis, Carl Jung considered the psyche as a carrier of truth, powerfully rooted in the unconscious mind. He suggested that there is a spiritual instinct in all human beings, an inherent striving toward a relationship with someone or something that transcends human power, a higher force or being. He agreed that spirituality and its practices, such as rituals and dogmas, were necessary to protect the human psyche when coping with stress and suffering, as it has throughout human history. In his work, he also stated that if there were no religion, 
human beings would create one. He wrote that without a god or higher power, humans would make a god out of something. Money, sex, power, political movements, stone, or reason itself. According to Jung, both religious practice and religious experience found their source in the collective unconscious. In one of his letters he wrote, Buddha's insight and the incarnation in Christ break the chain of suffering through the intervention of the enlightened human consciousness, which thereby acquires a metaphysical and cosmic significance. Carl Gustav Jung Letters, Volume 2, page 311 Research on Spirituality and Mental Health As mentioned earlier, spirituality has a positive impact on mental health. Below, I will share some information from studies that have shown the correlation between spirituality and mental health. Spirituality is associated with major physical health benefits, like greater longevity and immunity. Additionally, it may even reduce the risk of chronic conditions and is one of the keys to psychological well-being. It provides resources for coping with illness and other stressful life changes, enhances positive emotions, and helps neutralize negative emotions, which in turn reduces the likelihood that stress will result in emotional disorders such as depression, anxiety, suicide, and substance abuse. Let's look more closely at some of the major research collected from the Handbook of Religion and Health by Dr. Harold Kenig. Coping with Stress Several studies have revealed that spirituality helps people cope with life stressors, especially those involving medical or psychiatric illness. These studies report that spirituality was helpful in dealing with medical illness, chronic pain, caregiver stress, psychiatric illness, grief, end-of-life issues, natural disasters, war and acts of terrorism, and other adverse life situations. Positive Emotions Expression of spirituality is associated with an increased level of positive emotions, such as well-being and happiness, hope and high self-esteem, and a sense of purpose. It provides an optimistic worldview that may involve the existence of a higher force, God, that loves and cares about humans, and is responsive to their needs. It also allows one to release control over events and situations. Spirituality provides answers to such existential questions such as, Who am I? Where do I come from? And where do I go from here? Thus reducing existential pain by normalizing loss and change. In addition, human virtues are encouraged in many spiritual traditions, including love of others, compassion, kindness, gratitude, forgiveness and they may directly enhance positive emotions and buffer stress. Depression, Suicide, Anxiety Research findings report a lower level of depression or faster recovery among those who practice spirituality. In a recent study, spirituality correlates with neuroanatomical changes, specifically cortical thickness in the brain. Other studies show that there is less suicide fewer suicide attempts, and generally more adverse attitudes towards suicide among those who are religious or spiritually involved. Studies also reported significantly reduced anxiety among those who are more spiritual and those receiving spiritual guidance. Addiction Spiritual involvement is related to less alcohol and drug use. It has also been shown to help people recovering from alcohol and drug addiction. There is now an emerging number of studies that show health advantages and the recovery benefits of faith-based programs such as AA or 12 Steps. Social Problems Spirituality also provides practical morality along with a set of ethics and guidelines for behavior and values. Indeed, research shows that spirituality reduces the likelihood of delinquency and crime. Furthermore, Spirituality and religion encourage altruistic acts such as helping others 
and emphasize a focus outside the self. This may increase positive emotions and serve to distract from one's own problems. It is associated with greater marital stability and satisfaction, as well as a lessening of spousal and child abuse. The Negative Side of Religion and Spirituality There are times when religious and spiritual teachings can be harmful. It is said that there has been more bloodshed in the name of God than for any other cause. The following are examples of religion's negative impact. Interpretation of the scriptures can sometimes lead to hatred, aggression, prejudice, and the exclusion of others, gaining power and control over vulnerable individuals, encouraging judgment toward others, and encouraging intolerance against minority groups. If religion is based on the fear of sin rather than on the love of God, it can lead to anxiety, fear, and excessive guilt. Religion may also encourage magical thinking, like treating God as a genie that responds to our personal wishes. Failure of physical healing may trigger frustration and distress. Religion may be used instead of medical care. For example, individuals may delay investigations and treatment to demonstrate their faith. Some religious teachings resist the development of modern science. While the effects of religion and spirituality can be negative, it is still generally associated with greater well-being, improvements in coping with stress, and better mental health. That is to say, don't discard something undesirable along with something valuable, or in other words, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Include spirituality in health assessments. Since many patients have spiritual needs or turn to spirituality to regain hope and meaning in times of illness and pain, healthcare professionals should include the following recommendations in their practice. Knowledge of the patient's spirituality or religious beliefs. This will help create some context around how one or both influence our understanding of disease and its correlation to the healing process. Acknowledge the worth and benefit of the patient's faith and traditions. Ascertain the spiritual wishes and needs of the patient. Are these spiritual wishes and needs being met? I find using these questions in my assessment helpful in understanding individual spiritual background. What gives meaning to your life? What values are important in your life? Do you believe in a higher power? Do you have a personal relationship with your higher power? Can you describe your spiritual belief system? How are your spiritual needs met? Can you describe your experience with religion? What kind of spirituality is good for mental health? I've spent a few years of my practice in Canada questioning my patients who practice spirituality and ask them what they like most about their religion, beliefs, and traditions. After some years, it was evident that what they appreciated about the religion was almost the same. I began writing what I had been told and combined it with research and studies, which then manifested into the book you're reading now. It was interesting in finding out if similar concepts had been investigated before. My conclusion was that the main spiritual principles that help people psychologically are the same seven I summarized below which underscore the intention of the book. Non-attachment. Non-attachment means being okay with or without the things surrounding us, trying not to feel too attached to such things as money, position, titles, physical appearance, and so on, valuing everything and becoming attached to none of it. It is important to remember that we were not created to possess, but rather to be with. Non-judgment. Experience the present moment with neither indifference, attraction, nor revulsion. Practice seeing things as they are without judgment, including toward yourself, others, or life experiences. None of us has the capacity to know everything. Acceptance. Accept others, knowing that people would do better if they could. Accept yourself. We cannot change anything until we accept it. 
accept life. Try not to resist it, but rather work with it. Unconditional Love Practice loving yourself, others, and all forms of life, everywhere, and under all conditions, without exception. Most important, balance between loving yourself and loving others. Powerlessness Admit that by yourself, ego, or self, you are powerless over many things in life, and that a greater power than you is necessary to return to a state of love, joy, and peace. This power beyond you can be called the universe, nature, energy, consciousness, God. Names do not matter. Gratitude Be grateful for all that you have and seek to honor all life experiences, whether or not comprehensible or pleasant. Appreciate the positive experience. See the negative experience as a learning opportunity. Hope and Faith Never lose hope or faith. Remember that at the end, everything will work out for the best. Holding positive goals in your mind is inspirational and helpful because what you hold in your mind tends to manifest in reality. These principles are crucial to psychological well-being and studies I will share have revealed their importance. When medical residents and physicians as well as psychotherapists and counselors include these principles in other psychological interventions, such as dialectical behavior therapy and cognitive behavior therapy, they can result in more positive outcomes. I believe that applying these principles in the preparation and integration of psychedelic experiences during psychedelic-assisted psychotherapy will increase positive emotions such as joy, love, peace, and a sense of unity and oneness with the universe and with others, in addition to lowering guilt, depression, anxiety, and fear. Several studies have found that psychedelic-assisted therapy can lessen PTSD and fear of death in terminally ill patients. All of these principles have also aided patients struggling with personality disorders and addiction problems, especially those in search of meaning in life and those who are undergoing existential crises. They will help parents willing to fulfill their children's spiritual needs and atheists seeking spiritual connection without involvement in organized religion and dogma. This book offers help to religious leaders and spiritual teachers who are interested in understanding spirituality from a different perspective. Origin of the Principles The First Form of Life which could have originated some four billion years ago, looked like bacteria. These organisms were able to replicate or reproduce as separate entities. Single cells have evolved into the current diverse, complex organisms we see today, including minerals, plants, animals, and humans. Animals and humans acquired what was needed from the environment in order to survive. This is somewhat different from plants, which have chlorophyll that uses sun as a source of energy. Animals, by instinct, knew they must conquer and compete with other organisms for survival. They developed curiosity and intelligence through evolution and continued to evolve into progressively higher life forms. With the cognitive revolution of approximately 70,000 years ago, our ancestors developed larger brains and better ways to communicate through gestures and language Gradually, human beings have become the most powerful force on Earth. From East Africa across the globe, through expanded and stored knowledge and collective learning. We still, however, possess part of the primitive reptile brain that focuses on survival and feels separate from other organisms, humans, and nature. Although all forms of life emanate from the same source and we are all interconnected, the idea of separation has never left us since the earliest forms of life. We do not feel one with each other or with nature. Our animal instincts have evolved psychologically to make us feel separate and different. We can feel hate, fear, and anger toward other human beings. 
we began to overattach to things around us, believing that attachment will guarantee immortality, and others thinking that judgment will save us. Based on our survival, we instinctively learn to love, but only with conditions that we place on others. It is my belief that these principles will counter and eliminate negative behaviors and emotions felt towards ourselves and others, and consequently, benefit our mental health. Practicing non-attachment, acceptance, non-judgment, unconditional love, powerlessness, gratitude, and hope and faith will help restore our harmony with nature, our oneness and connectedness with surrounding life, with God and other human beings. I believe that our evolution will continue, not simply as physical evolution, but more so a psychological and spiritual movement forward, from Homo sapiens to Homo spiritus. In other words, from our survival-driven ego self-centeredness to higher forms beyond ego. In doing this, we will continue to evolve beyond our ego to what we call our highest virtues, as expressed in the Seven Principles.